Hopefully everybody's familiar with coffee beans. They're pretty simple, right? They all look the same at first glance. But here's the twist. With the exact same beans, you can make an espresso that's quick and intense, or a cold brew that's smooth and mellow. Same beans, completely different experience. The context shapes the outcome. I'm Ian, I'm a cloud advocate here at Microsoft, and context is one of those things we always don't think about, but it completely changes the outcome in coffee, but also in Java. Bruno is here again to show us how context engineering shapes Java applications and how the same code can behave so differently depending on the ecosystem around it. Bruno, over to you, take it away. Hi, Ian, thank you for having me. Yes, today we're gonna talk quickly about context engineering and how developers and Java developers can use advanced features in Visual Studio Code to enhance GitHub Copilot in the chat feature inside Visual Studio Code. This will allow developers to provide the right context at the right time and also reuse prompts and um, information in, uh, across the project so they don't have to be repeating themselves all the time when talking to uh, the Agentic AI in GitHub Copilot. So we're gonna cover a few features in Visual Studio Code one of them is custom instructions. The other one is prompt files. And the third one is chat mode. With these three features combined, developers can have the right context at the right time to perform the tasks. So let's take a look at the documentation. Uh, if you look at the Visual Studio Code documentation for GitHub Copilot chat, you're gonna see this section here called customize chat to your workflow. Everything that I'm gonna, I'm gonna demo here comes from this documentation. So if you if you want to learn and deep dive into it, just go for this documentation here on code.visualstudiocode.com. So now let's go to this Visual Studio Code application. I have this Java application. It's a Maven application, um, and it's already running on Java 25. It's a uh, it's a latest version of Java. And you can see this code is very simple. It's There is a main method and there is a print line for a hello world. And uh, it's using a new class available in Java 25 called IO. With this code here, we can run this Java application very fairly straightforward, hello world. Now, what if I want to plan a new feature in this code? Now, I can have this idea of a, a, um, a, a agentic AI task where I can copy paste the text from somewhere and then just put it in here in the context for this feature, do this, this, and this with this requirement, et cetera. But if you're gonna do that all the time, adding new features to a new code, you might as well actually have a chat mode that has that information all the time. So one of the most advanced features that we have is called chat mode in GitHub Copilot chat. So here I have this file called planner.chatmode.md. This file defines a description for what this chat mode is about, and then also enables uh, certain tools or MCP tools that this chat mode will use. This uh, helps uh, the Agentic AI to not use all the MCP tools available in your Visual Studio Code installation. And finally, which model will be used when using this chat mode? Now, the last thing is, of course, the instruction. Again, you don't want to repeat yourself all the time and you want to be able to quickly change between chat modes. So this will give you this space here where you can define what are the instructions for your LLM, for your feature. So I want to implement, um, I want you to be a planner. So you're gonna be in planning mode. Your task is to generate an implementation plan for a new feature. And the plan has to have overview requirements, implementation steps, and so on. So again, it's not um, uh, it's it's something that you very generic given a particular feature that you want to implement. But first, you want to plan that feature. So here's let's take a look. Uh, let's see how this works in, in in action. Usually, you have this agent mode selected. Agent mode is the most common thing that most developers are working with. It will go and make changes in your files. But what if we have this planner and this agent with these specific instructions here? Now, I'm going to say, give me a feature where I um, will make this program, not a feature, make this program output um, 
the current date, I'm giving a time zone. Make, make the program output the current date given a time zone. Now, this will just implement it the first time. Now, one thing that you're going to notice was that it's first, it is implementing the plan, not the actual code, because that is my ask. You're in planning mode, your tasks to generate the plan. Don't make any code edits. So the final output of this uh, uh, prompt is just a plan for my feature. Now, one thing that was uh, um, what was visible here was this. At the beginning of the plan, it actually added something, date, to, uh, today's date in UTC. This came from this last requirement that I added here. The plan must contain a header with today's date and time in UTC with this format. So we can see this in action happening here where the information in the prompt was processed by the AI. Now, now let's scale down. Once we learn this amazing feature, what are the other things that we can do that are actually even simpler? And we see this in action. Here, we see that the output actually gave us a joke about time zones. And this happened because it used two references. One reference was actually one file called copilot-instructions.md. This file is here in the .github folder, and it provides a generic instruction that will be processed whenever you talk to GitHub Copilot. Again, it's all about context. In my context, I want to have a joke about weather, about geography and climate. But you can have something like this project uses Java 25. Make sure that you always provide code syntax that is modern and up to date with new APIs and so on. So that instruction can go here. And whenever you talk to GitHub Copilot chat, that instruction will be provided to the um, AI. OK, but what if you don't want instructions to be processed all the time? You want instructions to be processed depending on what file you are editing. That's where you have the instructions folder. The instructions folder is a folder that provides the ability to have one, multiple files, multiple instructions with multiple uh, um, um, context settings based on your project, on your frameworks. You know, you can have a spring.instructions.md, you can have a hibernate.instructions.md, you can have a business uh, uh, requirements.instructions.md, and so on and so forth. And for each file, you can even set, I want to apply to a specific set of files. So whenever you talk to the LLM to make a change on the Java file, that's what this, this instruction will apply to. Finally, we want to have some prompts that we don't want them applied in any situation, but we want to have easy access to them in the chat. So instead of just going to that notepad and copying, pasting prompts, you can have them here. So let's take a look at this uh, code again. And here, let's take a look at what this prompt is. Bad practices dot prompt. This prompt here is uses the mode ask, not an agent, and it has a description identify and explain bad coding practices in the provided code snippet Claude, using Claude Sone 4. And then the best bad, pra bad practices in the identification instructions with a list of better practices found, a brief explanation of each one, and what are the suggestions that you can uh, 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 apply in the code. So let's reuse that here. Let's open the file, app.java, and let's make something here like string equals no, string message equals no, and then let's do message dot to string. I mean, this is already bad code because we are trying to do a two string on a variable that is null. So let's run this bad practice. You see here, I did a slash, and then it shows bad practices because it's getting from that file. So let's call this thing, and let's just run this, but let's not use the planner. Let's use the agent, and let's add the app.java. So now it's following instructions in badpractice.prompt.md. Now you're gonna notice the joke again. Why did the Java developer move to Arizona? Because they heard it had great dry heat for debugging. Bad joke, 
but it is a joke nonetheless. And the reason it came with a Java developer joke and not necessarily a weather joke is because it used GitHub Copilot instructions, but it also, because it's touching the, the, the Java file, it combined also this one here, making a programming joke. Okay, so now it doesn't analyze the app.java for bad practices, and then it finds something interesting. It's missing the static modifier in the main method. The main method lacks the static modifier and proper signature. This is incorrect. Why it's bound, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's an intentional no pointer exception. This is a great report. It already provides uh, information, but of course this is happening because the LLM, the model is trained on ver versions of Java uh, before Java 25 that just came out uh, a month ago. So the model actually doesn't know that the code syntax in Java 25 has changed and it, prov it, it actually allows code much simpler like this. So what could you do to enhance the context you could actually get the Java specification, the Java language specification, convert to Markdown and put in your instructions.md file with all the summary of the major changes in the language syntax. That will give you that context to work even with a model that was not trained with these changes while still leveraging new features in Java 25. So this gives you best and the better context engineering to work in your Java projects. I hope you enjoyed. And if you're curious about more, visit code.visualstudio.com and learn about custom instruction workflows. Thank you. Hey all, thanks for watching and following along with us. If you would like to find supporting content resources and the code we used, you can find them at aka.ms forward slash Java and AI for beginners. It's also linked in the description of this video and we'll see you in the next episode.